Hello and welcome to the Car Nerd Talks, where today I'm going to be talking to you about the GM EV... What? What do you mean? The schedule got moved till tomorrow? <sighs> Who makes the schedules around here? Like this is... I... Oh, I do. Alright. Okay. Um, just... We'll edit this out again. Cool. Okay. Hello and welcome to the Car Nerd Talks, where today we're going to be talking about a very interesting concept car called the Lamborghini Marzal. Now if you tuned in to listen to a story about the GM EV1, we've decided to take a little bit more time on that because there's a lot of background involved in that car and we want to do a more extensive video. It's probably going to come around the 20 minute mark, I reckon, if not more. And also watch out on Drive Tribe for that. But today we're going to talk about the 1967 concept car that never was, the Lamborghini Marzell. Before we do, don't forget, as always, to hit that like button as hard as you can. Imagine, for example, it's a GM executive's face. I'm not sure I'm going to say that, but I just did. He barked. And also, hit that subscribe button. I'd really appreciate it. Let's jump straight into it. In the late 1960s, well mid 1960s I guess you could say, Lamborghini was thriving. They had the 400 GT and the Miura had just debuted. They were doing really, really, really well. And Lamborghini, uh, Ferruccio Lamborghini wanted a four seat sports car, something that he could sell more frequently to the masses and also mainly just wanted a bit more marketing exposure. Because if you remember in a previous video, which you can watch up here, about the uh, Miura, mainly he just wanted to show that as a marketing tool and it didn't realize how much traction it would get, but then that's exactly what happened and it became a, a sensation. So he wanted a new four-seat sports car and they wanted to show it at the 1967 Geneva Motor Show. So he commissioned um, Marcello Gandini, the guy who had designed the Miro, would go on to design the Countach, the Bugatti EB110, the, the Diablo, uh, a ton of cars, a ton of absolutely fantastic cars, was put in charge of making uh, this prototype. And what he delivered was absolutely incredible. But before we get into the looks and the engine and whatnot, I'm just going to tell you a little bit about what Ferruccio Lamborghini said in terms of this car. So just to prove that this was never meant to be a production car, which is very sad for all of us, I'm going to read to you now a quote directly from uh, Ferruccio Lamborghini made in a piece in a magazine. I'll tell you what that is now. Let me just put on my uh, old person wear. The Marzal was not developed as a production car. If you present a car like the Marzal Automobiles shows such as Geneva, Turin and Frankfurt, all the magazines report it on the first page. You would rather spend 100 million lira for building such an automobile which is still less expensive than paying for all the advertising which would cost almost a billion lira. So, a com so it compensates in any case to build such a throwaway car. This was quoted by Fruccio Lamborghini in Lamborghini's The Quest for Perfection in Automobile Quarter. Good work. So anyway, Marcello Gandini produced an incredible looking car which was shown at the 1967 Geneva Auto Show. And let's jump straight now into the looks. This car looked incredibly futuristic and it would have a lot of the traits that we would see from Marcello Gandini throughout the years. Uh, it harks back a lot to things that would come later like the Countach wedge nose and that kind of square shape. But it actually has pretty much the same body that would go on to become the Espada and the four seats that would become the Espada. This was basically an Espada on cocaine. It looked absolutely amazing. And some of the features in this and details in this are absolutely beautiful. So if you look starting with the front headlights, this actually looks from the front, like someone produced a Lagonda years before it was ready, mixed it with a DeLorean, threw in a little touch of Cybertruck, and then someone just painted it with glass. It looks incredible. 
So at the front you'll see the six headlamps, which are actually slightly hexagonal in shape. Now the back window is also hexagonal, and a few of the details in this were hexagonal. This seemed to be a theme throughout, and also if you want to watch something uh, later, I think I have a Hurricane video, or maybe it's the Gallardo, or possibly Doug DeMuro said it, but that car had hexagonal uh, things all over it. It was just a, a car that was kind of painted in that, and I imagine that was probably an homage to this car. Now the piece de resistance on this car was simply the gold wing door, which was made of glazed glass, and it looked amazing. Imagine lifting that up and getting into it. This is like going into the future that people thought the future would look like in the 1960s. Something straight out of the Jetsons. And to continue on that, they made the alloy wheels out of magnesium alloy instead of anything else, and upholstered the whole thing in a silver fabric. It looked incredible. The engine in this car was designed by, wait for it, um, Giampaolo Dallara. Giampaolo Dallara. Uh, Dallara Motorsports, as you probably know, went on to be quite a big firm. Um, but basically, he designed this engine at the time, and all he did really was take a V12 from the old Lamborghinis in the Mira, split it in half, and created a two liter uh, flat six, or inline six, should I say. Uh, this engine worked incredibly well. This 2 litre produced 175 brake horsepower and 160 pound feet of torque, which would have given it a top speed at the time of 118 miles an hour. Now, that doesn't sound like a lot, but in those days, 118 miles an hour was quite a bit for a car. Like I said, he just split the V12 from the Lamborghini Mura in half, and that's not the only thing they took from the Lamborghini Mura. They also took the entire chassis from a Lamborghini Mura and lengthened it out. They took the steering from a Lamborghini Mura. They took uh, probably the radio from a Lamborghini Mira, but they also took the brakes and suspension. Now the suspension, as I talked about, it was not as good as it would have been in the Mira because the length and shape and heavier body puts a bit more strain on it. But nonetheless, an impressive car and performance figures, as, as I need to kind of point out, were only verified by Lamborghini and not outside of the company, so take them with a grain of salt. My final word on this car is that unfortunately we get a lot of these concept cars over the years and one that was just cancelled um, lately was the Vision M Next which was supposed to be the successor to the i8 but unfortunately because of the coronavirus pandemic a lot of retooling happened. So a lot of the time every single year we see a lot of these incredible concept cars and they don't really pan out in the way they should and it's just unfortunate. Now this car did go on to become the Espada but this definitely looked way better than the Espada. I think everyone would agree with that. But there you have it, that's the Lamborghini Marzal. And don't forget to tune in tomorrow to watch my extensive overview on the General Motors EV1. And also check me out on Drive Tribe where you'll see it. Hit that like button, subscribe, uh, touch my face through the camera. Do whatever you want, just subscribe, it'd be great. Thanks for watching guys, see you tomorrow.